Hey y'all, Kevin Hutchison here with Realty Austin, and I am grateful to be a part of Stories Inside the Man Cave, a homegrown podcast just like my own business. Wake your ass up or take a damn nap. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. It's time. I mean, Sean, you were twerking. That's going to happen. <laughs> Murph, don't be a dick all your life. This is uh, one, of, one of the more fun podcasts I've ever done. Hey, I'll tell you what. If you're not talking about sports in the man cave, you... No, nah, I bet not. So you're not a man. <laughs> That's it. And we were second in recruiting last year. a and was first. a and bought every player on their team. Made a deal for name, image, and likeness. All right, we didn't buy one player. All right, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future because more and more people are doing it. Wow. And just like that, we have a new rivalry in college football. Texas A&M, Alabama. You know, Texas A&M, they had a big upset in College Station last year. But now we have taken it to another level, and I'm loving it. If you're a true college football fan, you are enjoying the trash talk which has ensued between Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M. Unbelievable, but the game is healthy when you have things such as this, two head coaches calling each other out, or, need I say, bringing some fire to the game in this really protected world where players and coaches, they're – basically in an environment in which they say cliches um, due to the media relations or protecting the brand. They are protected from saying certain things and being respectful, saying things in a respectful manner about the opponent and not calling out another team. Well, we have taken this to a new lo- another level. This is why we are having a special episode We're calling it the New Rivalry in College Football, episode 137, sponsored by Honest Air Conditioning and Plumbing, based out of Hutto. They serve Hutto, Georgetown, Pflugerville, North Austin, Leander, Georgetown, Cedar Park. If you're in those areas, man, give these guys a call. We've already reached triple digits, and it's never too late to get your AC maintenance, or if you already need repairs, because we've already hit triple digits, and we're still in May. Give Honest AC and Plumbing a call. They will be good to you, and you'll probably receive a handshake. That's what they're all about. They still believe in that and respect the handshake as a promise uh, behind the quality of their work. Okay, so you just heard Nick Saban, a guy who has won seven national championships, call out Texas A&M. We are in the NIL era, name, image, likeness. There really are aren't too many boundaries whatsoever it's the wild wild west currently anything goes you have nonprofits set up by alumni groups and you have other entities such as businesses setting up opportunities for student athletes i'm all for it i'm all for nil but right now there is a huge gray area and there is no proof that texas a&m purchased the number one recruiting class in the country, there's no proof in that, okay? The the program who caused this field behind us, they were five and seven last year, and they had a top five recruiting class. So let's think about things. In this new NIL era, the top programs, and this is not to take away from Steve Sarkeesian and his staff, they have done a phenomenal job recruiting at Texas they're well on their way to taking that next step and rebuilding the program. But this is about Texas A&M and Alabama. Alabama, even though they didn't win the national championship losing to Georgia, they're still Alabama. Why even worry about calling out Texas A&M? Now, that's one way of interpreting what Saban said at a function where Nick Saban was asked about that. Um He's a guy that speaks the truth, speaks, he's very transparent. But why even say that about Texas AM? So, and why did Jimbo Fisher call a press conference? I'm going to divide this in three different parts. You've probably seen it social media. Jimbo Fisher was unhinged 
very very open very organic this got into his feelings and this first soundbite from jimbo the same day that or what was this is in response to save those comments you heard saving basically reassuring everybody they didn't break any rules in signing the perhaps the best recruiting class ever according to stars ratings this is the first soundbite no players in your you're saying that no players in there's the no, no laws of anything any we ever promised done anything that goes against the laws of the state of texas and it's insulting to say a 17 year old and his family broke laws no okay clear that up no rules broken according to state laws and the name image likeness agreement that's fair that's fair i don't have a problem with that don't have a problem with that at all but he took it to another level Saban didn't actually call out Jimbo Fisher, called out the entire football program, but Jimbo took it to another level, calling out Saban. Now, I'll give Some you people my... think they're God. Go dig into how God did his, his deal. You may find out about, about a guy that a lot of things you don't want to know. We built him up to be the czar of football. Go dig into his past or anybody that's ever coached with him. You can find out anything you want to find out, what he does and how he does it. I said this, my dad always told me this, when people show you who they are, believe them. He's showing you who he is. Okay. I've heard that before, too. I was uh, raised hearing that. People show you who they are. They really are. I'm not convinced that. I've heard stories, too. You probably have as well um, about Nick Saban. (coughs) But there's a greater meaning to this, much bigger meaning to this. As I call, pull up the last soundbite, Jimbo reassuring again that they're doing everything right at Texas A&M. And these families, it's despicable that a reputable head coach could come out and say this when he doesn't get his way or things don't go his way. The narcissist in him doesn't allow those things to happen. And it's ridiculous But when, when he's not on top. And the parody in college football he's been talking about, go talk to coaches who coach for him. You'll find out all the parody. Go dig into wherever he's been. You can find out anything. And it's a shame that you got to sit here and defend 17-year-old kids and families in Texas A&M because we do things right. We're always going to do things right. Okay. All right. That fired up the Texas A&M fan base. They're all behind Jimbo. That is a rallying call. We were called out. I mean, we, being Texas A&M, called out by Nick Saban. Okay? The story's never going to die. Wait till SEC media days. It will pick up back again. Meanwhile, you've got uh, Texas, the Longhorns, Steve Sarkeesian. Why is there not something being called out for Texas having a top five recruiting class? after a five and seven season okay you're not hearing anything but the big piece because it's not a story in my opinion it's just a uh, the nil era and steve sarkeesian and his staff are able to sell a product being texas football going back up plus the nil money on the outside funding opportunities it's the name of the game it's the landscape of college football now i'm not defending anybody i'm just calling this out like i see it so this is what you need to do and i'm going to give you my opinion about the overall meaning behind all this i'm pretty sure this was all planned out in not well ahead but first of all circle this date on your calendar october 8th Texas OU, more than likely a 1, 11 a.m. kickoff in Dallas. Um, great rivalry, perhaps the greatest rivalry in college football. But this new up-and-coming rivalry, you know, Texas A&M beat Alabama uh, in 2012 under Johnny Manziel, beat him again this past season in College Station. The Aggie fans stormed the field. It was a uh, a great night in college football to witness that. Uh, this is on the same day. Texas OU, AM, Alabama, Tuscaloosa. It's going to be a fun day. All right, so after you, since you marked that in your calendars, here's the meaning of what is taking place. There's a new rivalry in college football. So Nick Saban says that. He knows what he's doing. He's a smart guy. He said what he said against for about texas a&m for a reason there's a calculated reason i don't think that he is worried about texas a&m and then texas a&m athletic director ross bjork um calls greg sankey the commissioner of sec of the sec 
and to reprimand Alabama for violation of a sportsmanship rule. Okay, it's all part of an act. And all part of an act to bring attention to not only college football and this NIL deal, NIL era, but to the SEC. You're going to have people talking about this. This was an opportunity to market both programs and to market college football and to market the SEC. That's all this is, my opinion. I don't know that for a fact, but this leads me to the point that this was just a marketing opportunity. And why it continues to be brought up in questions, people are talking about it. That's all it is. That's all it is. All right? Be glad it's happening. College football is the greatest game, greatest sport. It's the way to keep the talk going year-round. I want to hear your opinion. Log on to Twitter, at Stories Man Cave. I want to know what you think. Am I wrong? Am I right? But it is what it is. And it's going to be fun, too. We'll see what Texas does with this uh, NIL era as Alabama comes to town in Austin to play the Longhorns in Sarkeesian's second season as UT's head coach. For the OG Man, Bo- OG Man K boys themselves, Big Mike, Harbaugh, Harge, and Coach Mo. We out. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up.